I'm Kristen Bandy with the Live, Learn, Play podcast at Arkansas Children's, and I'm talking to Dr. Elijah Bolin, pediatric cardiologist, about fetal echoes today. How are you? I'm good, thanks. Thanks so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me. Uh, What is it exactly that you do here? So I'm a pediatric cardiologist in the section of cardiology here at Children's Hospital. Um, I, I practice general pediatric cardiology, so children with heart problems and young adults and even adults with heart problems. Um, And I also do fetal cardiology. So I diagnose and sometimes treat children with heart disease before they're born. Now, a fetal fetal echo is when a mother comes in pregnant Mm -hmm. and you do it in utero, correct? Yes. Yep. We do ultrasound in utero and then we provide consultation to uh, that mother, that family as well about what what we see on the fetal echocardiogram. And what are you looking for during a fetal echo? So we're looking at the structure of the baby's heart and also the function. So how well it's squeezing, how the valves are working. um, And we make sure that there aren't any structural problems with the baby's heart. We recently spoke with Kristen Ferguson, whose son Sloan, they found out at 24 weeks and through a fetal echo that he had heart issues. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Yeah, so I I was the one who was privileged enough to be able to perform that fetal echocardiogram and and just, just a pleasure of a family to to get to know and an honor to be able to treat Sloan and and talk with uh, talk with their family. Um, so when I first met the family, uh, we diagnosed very serious congenital heart disease in Sloan um, uh, before he was born, obviously. Um, and that that first visit is always um, very difficult for families. It can be yeah. earth shattering. You think that you're having a normal pregnancy and then suddenly uh, you're confronted with, number one, a very serious diagnosis that has implications for the rest of your child's life. Right. And number two, it's, it's complicated. It's really hard to understand all the stuff. I mean, it took me 11 plus years of training to understand what's going on in children's hearts. And I'm trying to summarize what I know about Sloan's heart in, in an hour long conversation. So that his parents understand even like, (laughs) you know, it's, I don't understand it. And I've been, you know, dealing with Kristen Ferguson and it's still, you know, a difficult thing to understand. I can't imagine trying to explain that to a parent who's already feeling kind of overwhelmed with information. Yeah. Um, and they, they did valiantly Sloan's father, Brock, actually I had, I, I had a little help from him because he actually had congenital heart disease, repaired congenital heart disease. Which so is he, why she came in the first place for a fetal exactly, echo, correct? Exactly. Yeah. Right. So um, that was that was the indication for the fetal echocardiogram that we performed that day. Um, and so Brock, the family, had a framework for understanding congenital heart disease. And thankfully, I had that to work with. But a lot of times we have to start from scratch. Right. So I know that we talked about Brock being the reason because he had a he had a heart condition as a child. And so both of her pregnancies, she did a fetal echo. What would be the other indications or reasons that someone might come in for one if they didn't have a history in their family? Yeah. So, uh, the other ones are the big ones that we take care of are if the obstetrician is concerned that there's heart disease in the fetus. Um, that's another big one. One that we see a lot of is diabetes in women who have diabetes, whether it is type 1 or type 2 diabetes, diabetes that predated the mother becoming pregnant. Sometimes as well, it's if the, there's an abnormal fetal heart rate, the fetal rhythm is too fast, uh, we'll also diagnose arrhythmias in utero. But those are some of the big reasons. Family history, uh, diabetes, obviously if the obstetrician thinks there's something wrong in arrhythmias. So you said the obstetrician finds something wrong. Is that something they would catch during the 20 week ultrasound? That's, you know, they're looking at all of the the things. It's Mm -hmm. interesting. So talk us through the process. Say the OBGYN does think that they need to have a fetal echo. Mm -hmm. What's that like once that referral is made? Yeah, so we ideally like to perform the fetal echocardiogram between 20 and 28 weeks gestation. It's just easiest for us to see the baby's heart uh, during those weeks. After that, it gets a little bit harder, but it's possible we can still do it. Before that, the structures are so small so as to be a little bit difficult to visualize. We have done it before, before 20 weeks. So a mother will get um, referred to us and we do, depending on the indication, we try to do everything we can to expedite it. And we'll, we can, we, as much as we can, can accommodate even next day visits. Oh, wow. Um, depending on the, uh, the concerns uh, by the obstetrician. I think that's lovely that you try to get it done as fast as possible because there's already so much stress. Yeah. 
I can't imagine waiting a week for an appointment. Well, I can't either. Um, I mean, and, and I, you know, I've got five children and none of them have heart disease. And even those for all of them, I did fetal echocardiograms on all of them because be sure. I wanted to know, you know, right. and so if you, it, it's, it's entirely stressful to these families. So we do, our section tries to do all they can to accommodate those requests for, you know, same day, next day, same week. I mean, I can't promise, you know, all of our listeners out there that we can do that, but, but we try to best. as best we can. And yeah. I think that that's wonderful that you even try to get yeah. them in so quickly. That's awesome. So when you're looking at a fetal heart, what is the difference between that and an older child's heart? You yeah. said you had to, it's kind of like a window between too little and, or too young and too old yeah. in so, utero. So in utero, that 20 to 28 weeks, um, it just is uh, the, there's enough um, amniotic fluid for us to see through and the amniotic fluid helps the ultrasound beams. After that, we can still see stuff. It just gets a little harder. Then, but, but there are differences between, you know, fetal, heart physiology, the way blood goes around in the fetus versus how blood goes around in a baby's heart after they're born. And we assess that as well. The big difference there is the placenta. You know, babies use the placenta. It's like their scuba tank, you know, and they, 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 um, they, they don't use their lungs, right? In utero, they're surrounded by fluid. And so they're not using their lungs. So they use the mother's placenta or the, it's their placenta, but they use the placenta to breathe. And so there has, there's this big changeover in the physiology, the way that blood goes around in baby's heart. So we're assessing how the blood is going around to the placenta, back from the placenta, and then around in the baby's heart. And do all of these tests, do they take place in the hospital? They, well, we do it in a clinic. Um, and uh, that, that clinic is located at Arkansas Children's or over at uh, a clinic associated with UAMS. We do that echocardiogram, that fetal ultrasound, the same day, and we interpret the results right there, and then we talk That's to the wonderful. family. So it's not like the family goes home, waits a couple days for the results. We talk to them right there, same day, and describe what we see. And because we're cardiologists, we know what to anticipate, how if the child is going to need surgery, then what surgeries they're going to undergo. We draw pictures. Um, use diagrams, and it all happens same day. So the family should go home with all of their questions answered. So it's a cardiologist like mm -hmm. you that performs and mm -hmm. reads those results. That's right. How many fetal echoes do you, would you say that we do as a system? It's over a 1,000 a year, wow. um, fetal echocardiograms every year. Mm -hmm. that's, that's a lot. It's a lot, yep. And we have six fetal cardiologists. So six. there, there are plus or minus 18 cardiologists in our section. And six of us and we'll have another coming next year. So it'll be seven of us who do fetal echoes. Seven total. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned that you also had a clinic at UAMS that does the same thing. There's a, it's mm -hmm. an Arkansas Children's Clinic mm -hmm. at UAMS. Do we have any other clinics across the state that yeah. do? Yeah, great question. So Dr. Renee Bornemeyer, the, the director of our fetal echo program uh, about 10, 11 years ago, um, pioneered a fetal teleechocardiography program. Um, and so there are about five sites across the state for women who are unable to travel here to Little Rock who need fetal echocardiograms and consultation. And we actually published the results of that, um, that program uh, about a year and a half ago. Um, and it's been very successful. Dr. Bornemeyer deserves a lot of credit for it. Um, the, um, there's about 100, 150 women every year who, who take part in those echocardiograms and who we perform consultation over video connection. We actually have a sonographer drive to each of those sites to perform the echocardiogram there. And then it's again, same day, same time consultation. Um, and it's been very effective. So somebody is there physically with mm -hmm. the mother yep. and then you do telehealth to exactly. read the results. Yep, exactly. Oh, that's interesting. Yep. And, and what happens is if we find really significant disease in that in that child in that fetus is then we'll have the mother come down we'll schedule an appointment for her to come down and and if the child is going to need heart surgery then they get to see the the facilities here meet surgeons um and and understand more what is going to happen here once their child is born it's awesome service that we provide yes yeah. it is difficult to come i mean as a pregnant person it's difficult to drive anyway but to, yeah. to drive that far yeah, it's as far as I know, it's the only statewide uh, fetal teleechocardiography program. No other states offer that um, uh, as a statewide program. Yeah, that's awesome. How do you help the parents with their anxiety and their worry? 
what yeah. what can you do to to ease that for them as they face these big challenges? Great question. Well, the first the first answer is that we should do that. You know, Absolutely. I mean, uh, and and our job isn't just to convey data, although that's one of our most important things that we do as fetal cardiologists. But um, one of one of the hardest jobs I think for us is to convey the information without jargon, you know, to use words that make sense. Right. Um, and, and we all we all have spent all this time training and it's so easy for us to fall back on the acronyms and the big words, the Latin and all the stuff that just doesn't make any sense to anybody outside of our little esoteric world. And so it's our job. It's incumbent on us to use words that make sense um, and that are going to be. Uh, accessible to the lay person. Just as like when you get your computer repaired, the computer repair guy needs to use words that you understand as well because right. we're not all computer people. In fact, most of us aren't. So I, t I, I try to talk to families in ways that they can understand with basic words. And, and I, I, the other thing that I try to do is give lots of time for questions. And, and sometimes those questions come in waves. And once you, you give a little bit more information, then it, it, it takes some time for that information to set in for a family. And then they have more questions. And, and these visits take sometimes an hour or two. And, and it just, it does. And sometimes you don't have a question until a couple hours later. So I'm exactly. assuming they can reach back out. Exactly. And we give them all kinds of contact information. And, um, and, and we encourage families to call us, you know, if, they, if, if there's something afterwards. I'm terrible at that. I will remember two days later, oh, that's, that's well, the one I should have asked. Yeah. <laughs> should, well, I should have asked we, that and one. You know, and we, we have a nurse dedicated to... Uh, our fetal echo and fetal cardiology program, Jenna Schmidt, and she she is a maven. She takes care of all of that, and she it's great because she is a former CVICU nurse, so she worked in our cardiac intensive care unit. So she's frequently able to answer questions for families, and then she you know if she can't or the family needs to talk to a doctor, which is very frequent, then we just call family back right away. Sometimes so. just having somebody that you know is going to answer the phone yep. to yep. hear your question. Right. That's all you need. You yep. can wait a little bit for an answer as long as somebody heard it at yep. least. So tell me, what is your favorite part of your job? It's, it's the families. I mean, you know, the, the, the fact that they invite me into uh, their lives. Um, and um, and this, is, this is frequently the most stressful thing that will have happened to a family. And, um, and, that, uh, and it's, but it's, it's, I mean, it's their child, and it's the most important thing that will have ever happened to this family as well. And and they invite me into their lives, and you know, all the uh, frequently families, you know, send me emails with pictures and updates, and I love that. And they, you know, we go to birthday parties, and it's just as, it's it's um, it is it is such a privilege to be part of these families' lives. And they're in your life forever after that. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. You get Christmas cards. Oh yeah. Yeah. And, and it's such a pleasure. Yeah, we put them up on the on the I fridge and yeah that's awesome mm -hmm. well i appreciate you talking with us today i learned a lot i know until you're in the situation of needing a fetal echo you don't really have to know anything about it and i think it's so important that we all kind of have a general knowledge of what other people are going through because it helps us be a little more empathetic absolutely absolutely thank you so much for having me today thanks Real for talking pleasure. to us mm -hmm. thank you